Hey, this video is brought to you today by my friends at Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt and no sugar. Element was formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following keto, low carb, or paleo diets. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium per packet. The perfect ratio I have found for me. What I love the most is that there's no junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, no BS. As a member of our community, Element has a very special offer for you. You can claim your free Element sample pack simply by going over to the website, drinkelement.com forward slash Marcus Philly to get yours. And if you're wondering what my favorite flavor is, raspberry salt mixed with some ice water is delicious. I hope you enjoy. Bro, do you even dumbbell row? It is easy to get preoccupied with the chest, abdominals, quads, and bicep development. I mean, those muscles are always staring you in the face when you look in the mirror. Thankfully, when I was younger, I was given a very important tip that stuck with me forever. And that tip was, train the muscles on the backside if you wanna be really strong and if you wanna look athletic. So I made it a mission of mine back then to always prioritize back training. Almost two decades later, I still never miss a week of back focused training. I always included upper body pulling at least two times a week in my training in all of the programs I write as well. In fact, I made an entire YouTube video about building a chiseled back. And if you wanna go explore more about that approach and the methods I use for that in general, be sure to click the link on the screen. But today I wanna to zero in on the dumbbell row in order to show you how versatile it can be as part of a functional bodybuilding program. Over the years, I've introduced a variety of different dumbbell rows into my training and my programs, and they've helped me take advantage of the versatility of the dumbbell. See, a dumbbell offers a lot of benefits that you can't get with a traditional barbell row. We can manipulate the range of motion much easier when we're using dumbbells since they move around the body with more freedom than a barbell does. Dumbbells also allow us to perform bilateral and unilateral exercises depending on how much we want to isolate one side versus the other. Furthermore, we can easily adapt the direction that we pull the dumbbell and in doing so change the shoulder positions and angles leading to different muscle groups getting more or less focus in each of your row variations. So join me today as I break down eight different ways that we perform the dumbbell row in functional bodybuilding. We can change angles, stability, loading stimulus, and finally apply these movements to both strength and conditioning formats in our FBB programs. Okay, let's get started. The first two dumbbell row variations are the most foundational rows that we perform, and they will allow you to take advantage of more or less stability and support while performing your row. The first example is the tripod rotational dumbbell row. This variation of the dumbbell row provides you slightly less support and stability. You'll have to take a tripod stance and you'll be supporting yourself with your non-working arm. This is gonna require the full body to work a bit more than variation number two, which you'll see in a few moments. To perform this correctly, find a surface to place your non-working hand on that is about the height of your knee. A classic bench works for most people. Your support hand is ideally directly underneath your shoulder and your torso is roughly parallel to the floor. I want your feet to be in line with each other and just wide enough that you feel very stable from side to side. From here, you're gonna pull the dumbbell as high as you can with your hand finishing right next to your rib cage. In addition, I'm also gonna ask you to rotate your shoulder back slightly. This will engage even more of your upper back through the rhomboids. Moving on to variation two, this is the prone dumbbell row. And like I said before, this is a more supported, stable, and therefore isolated variation of upper body rowing to target back muscles and to take out full body stability. To perform this correctly, the prone row can be performed on either a flat bench or on an incline bench. 
The rowing mechanics are very similar to the tripod rotational dumbbell row, except now we won't be adding in body rotation. As I said, the key difference is that in this position we have much more support and therefore we can focus more intensity on the row and less on the stabilization of your body with your stance and your non-working arm. Remember that the angle of the bench that you're using will slightly impact what muscles are getting the bulk of the work in your back. So find an angle that you love and you can stick to it. Or alternatively, change the angle by 10 to 15 degrees from workout to workout. Okay, the next two dumbbell row variations that I'm gonna show you are gonna change the angle of the rowing stimulus. The first example is called the RNT dumbbell hip row. That stands for reactive neuromuscular training and this is going to emphasize the lats even more. To perform this correctly, the position of the band should be around the wrist. You're actively going to be pulling against the band as you pull the dumbbell head towards your hip. The direction of the pull is up and backwards, and in doing so, this will very strongly recruit the lats in this movement variation. The second variation in this category is the elbowing dumbbell row, and this is going to be emphasizing more of the rear delts. Optimal performance in the elbowing row will require you to pull your elbow directly out to the side of your body, making a 90 degree angle between your upper arm and your torso. Just like the hip row before, I like performing this with a knee on the bench to add plenty of stability so that you can focus on the isolation of the rear deltoid muscles as you pull the elbow out and wide. Keep in mind, in this variation, you are likely to be much weaker than in the previous variations that I've shown. Anticipate grabbing a lighter dumbbell so that you can get correct form and therefore really work the rear deltoids. The next category of movements in these two dumbbell row variations are gonna add some variance to how you experience the loading, both in the way of band resistance as well as directional force on the dumbbell. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. The first example is the banded chainsaw row. The performance of this exercise starts with looping the band around your feet and then placing the dumbbell directly underneath the band. You're gonna be reaching your hand in between the band to grab the dumbbell head so that as you pull, the band is hooked around the dumbbell, adding resistance towards the top of every single row. You're gonna be leaning your non-working forearm against the forward leg as you assume somewhat of a lunge stance. On every repetition, as you pull the dumbbell up towards your chest, band tension increases, and that is making the highest tension point of every repetition at the top of the row. So this is where you're gonna get maximal back contractions. To recap, by using the band in this variation, we are changing how you are experiencing loading stimulus throughout the range of motion. It is a dynamic load from bottom to top of the range of motion, getting stronger at the top and lighter at the bottom. In the second example in this category, we're using a crush grip bent over row. Proper performance of this variation is going to require you to assume a hinged bent forward position with a flat back. When you go to grip the dumbbell, you are going to actually apply a strong inward force to the dumbbell. Think about squeezing or crushing that dumbbell between your two hands. This shoulder adduction, isometric, is going to recruit your pec muscles while you're rowing and make it a very unique way to experience the load and to hold on to the dumbbell. As you'll see later in this video, this is going to make for a great variation of the row to use in a superset with a chest exercise on a push-pull training day. Okay, two more functional bodybuilding row variations to show you, and the following two dumbbell row variations are great for use inside of conditioning workouts. The first is the dumbbell gorilla row. The key to performing this movement correctly is taking a wide enough stance and also finding a comfortable hinge position. Throughout the repetitions of this exercise, I do want the dumbbells resting on the floor every single repetition. A great example of how we can use the gorilla row in a conditioning workout in functional bodybuilding is something we call ascending triplets. An ascending triplet has a fixed time domain, in this case, 10 minutes. You start with two repetitions of each exercise and every round you're gonna add two more repetitions. So two, four, six, 
eight and onward. You're gonna combine gorilla rows with dumbbell bench and finally rowing for calories on the Concept2 rowing machine. The last functional bodybuilding dumbbell row variation is the quadruped plank dumbbell row. To execute this movement well, you will want to make sure your shoulders are directly over the dumbbells and that your hips and knees are roughly at 90 degree angles. If you take a slightly wider foot stance, this is going to help you with balance when you row. Putting this inside of a conditioning workout and functional bodybuilding can look just like this. We have three exercises that utilize a pair of dumbbells and then one exercise on a cardio machine like the bike. You start with dumbbell burpees for five reps. Then you move on to 10 alternating quadruped rows. Then it's onto the bike for 15 calories and then 20 alternating tall plank knee to elbows. That is one round. You would complete five consecutive rounds with high quality movement and sustained pace. Well, now that I've introduced all eight of those functional bodybuilding row variations, let me talk to you a little bit about how we use those in our training. I've already shown you several ways that we actually use those movements inside conditioning workouts, but how about for resistance training? Well, in functional bodybuilding, we do a lot of supersetting. How do you superset a dumbbell row? The reason supersetting is very common in functional bodybuilding is that we often wanna take two exercises, perform them back to back for the benefit of two particular reasons. The first reason we would use a superset is to increase intensity in a specific movement pattern or muscle group. We refer to this as compounding sets. Dumbbell row variations are a great way to leverage this principle. A great compound set example is the following. You would start out with strict weighted chin-ups at a 3-1-X-1 tempo for four to six reps. Once you complete your chin-ups, take a 30 second rest, walk over to your incline bench and perform 10 incline dumbbell prone rows at a 2-0-X-1 tempo. After you finish your prone rows, take a two minute break, restart with the chin-ups and complete that same compound set for three or four total sets and that's the workout. The second way we would leverage supersets is to help increase the efficiency inside of a training session. See, by pairing two movements that complement one another, meaning they don't tax one another when you perform them back to back, we can perform back to back exercises with shorter rest periods and therefore cut down on the total time that we're in the gym. Two common examples of that that we can use the dumbbell row for would be a push pull superset and a squat pull superset. The push pull superset example goes as follows. You're gonna perform a set of close grip bench press at a 3-0-1-0 tempo for 12 reps. After 60 seconds rest, you're gonna go and perform a crush grip dumbbell row, this time at a 2-0-2-0 tempo for the same 12 repetitions. Now you can take another 60 second break, repeat the close grip bench press, and finish out that same superset for three or four total sets. In the squat pull example, we're gonna start with a back squat. We're gonna perform eight repetitions at a 2-0-X-1 tempo. Then, just like the previous, we're gonna take a 60 second rest and we're gonna go immediately into the tripod dumbbell rotational row. This time at 2-1-X-1 tempo for six to eight reps per arm. After you finish your tripod dumbbell rotational row, it's a full two minute break before you restart your back squats and then complete this superset for three to four total sets. Hey, I hope you can take some of these concepts and start using them right away in your training. The dumbbell row won't get old if you mix in a few of these variations. Try and remember that creativity isn't the only goal within training. Be sure that you're starting with something fundamental like pulling. Then you can take a single movement like the dumbbell row and find a few creative variations that will allow you to vary your stimulus and apply the movement to different training circumstances. And if you wanna see how I put a dumbbell row into full workouts from start to finish, then drop down to the description below and sign up for a two week free trial of my training program, Persist. There are four training tracks and a ton of bonus material for you to consume. With Persist, if you show up to the gym, 
then we will take care of the rest. And as always, everyone, thank you for your time. I know you have a limited amount of it, and I'm always grateful you shared some of it with me. Take care. See you soon.